UK Rugby Sevens TV. I'm Kate Woodward. And I'm Charles Evans. Well, guys, this is it. It's the final leg of the Super Seven Series. We're at Coldy, and oh my goodness, it is blowing a hooey today. It's not going very well for my hair, I have to say. So the last leg of the series, we saw a very strong Templar side win at Caerphilly. So they are now at the top of the table. Now the situation as it is, is that for Barracuda Samurai to catch or win the series, they have to win the tournament today and the Templars must lose in the quarterfinal. So it should be a very action packed day. Let's go and see how it pans out. So we're now joined by Russell Earnshaw, who's the assistant coach for the England Sevens and the coach for the GB students today. Also a former player for the Pups and Ed Tailwright, who is a player for the GB students. So uh, I'll start with you first, Ed. How's it going today and uh, how you done so far in the series? Uh, very good today. Uh, we've played three games and uh, we've won all three of them. So we've topped the group going through to the quarters uh, in the next game. Okay, so tell us how you uh, got selected for the side. Uh, a few months back there was a, a trial uh, for all sort of students um, that wanted to go for it. I obviously put my name forwards for it and um, uh, Russell contacted me, uh, you know, gave me a call and said, uh, you know, you've been selected for the Cardiff leg, uh, come down and play for us. So I was like, yeah, that's brilliant, that's absolutely fantastic. So, there it is. so, well, good start, you're doing pretty well. You must be pretty chuffed with how everything's going for you personally. Yeah. Russell, turning to you. Um, Events like this obviously give you an opportunity to have a look at certain types of players. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, I mean, we started the process a few months ago with uh, <coughs> WRU as well, uh, and they've used it as a bit of a stepping stone. So have we, to look at our players, we've had uh, Sam Shires has gone from us and played some fear stuff for England, um, and, and Wales have had similar success with, uh, with a couple of our players, Owen Jenkins, one of them. Uh, and just really use the whole process as a, a trial for the players looking for the World Games in Brief. So uh, in the 8th of uh, July, we all head off to Brief, playing the World Games against some of the, the best student sides in the world and you know, aiming to, uh, to go over there and win the tournament. This is just part of the preparation, really. OK, now talk about the World Games. Obviously, that's going to be a high-caliber tournament, um, some great players there. How does uh, a series like this actually prepare some of your players uh, to step up to that next level? Yeah, it's good, you know, you see out there, there's not a, uh, there's no real, there's a couple of sides that are, are pretty good, there's, um, but everyone, it's a really even series at the moment, so we think we're sat fourth in the table, we'd like to finish third by the end of today, that's our plan. Okay, guys, fantastic, thanks for cool. talking to us, and uh, good luck for the quarterfinal and the rest of the tournament. Top, thanks, Cheers, guys. Cheers, Skill of the week. You know who I am, this is Captain Coffee, and this is Maskill of the week. Watch your land. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, cut with me, cut with me, cut with me. Oh yes! <laughs> In your face, that's how we do it in Ghana. I'm with Mike Friday, who is a former England uh, Sevens coach and Wasps player. He also happens to write a column for the UK Rugby Sevens magazine. Hi, Mike. So I understand you're involved with Samurai, obviously, today. Um, and I know that Samurai and Templars are both very tied to the top of the table at the moment in the Super Series. How do you feel it's going to go today? What are your hopes for the team? Um, well, the reality is it's in Templars' hands, so it's down to theirs, them to lose. They're in control, so uh, all we can do is worry about ourselves. We've got to try and win this tournament. That's what uh, we've set ourselves out to, to try and achieve. Going to be tough. Um, we've got Marauders in the last game. We've played Kamikaze and, and Kuldi already. So if we can uh, win that last game, then we can progress into the quarterfinals. But you know, we're just focusing on us, really. We, we've kind of slipped up at Worthing, uh, which has opened the door for Templars, and, and they've certainly gone through that door. And they've been very consistent um, in the three previous legs. So uh, we'll have to see what unfolds uh, later on today. OK, and being a, uh, a former England Sevens coach, how do you find the Super Series um, helping the progression of the players into sort of the national circuit? Yeah, it certainly has a part in the, in the development pathway and, and, you know, looking at it as a, as a former coach, you know, this is the type of environment and arena that you can pick up players that wouldn't, wouldn't normally be seen. You know, a lot of the players that are in the, the, the lower leagues um, within England are, are applying their trade on the seventh circuit and being given the uh, the opportunity to showcase their skills and that's probably where this this super series sits 
you know, you've got the FIRA tournament and the IRB, which is the, is the pinnacle of, it, of England Sevens, but this is where young players can develop. And the, uh, the national coaches, as they are at the moment, Paul Jolly's here today, will be watching young Welsh players. Ben Ryan and, uh, comes down occasionally, and then you've had Russell Earnshaw, the, who'll be scouting, because you never know what you, might, what you might come across, what you might find. And, and that's the, uh, the exciting part, probably, of this Super Seven series. A young player that's unknown, that probably hasn't made the breakthrough in the world of 15s, um, can come here, ply his trade, and maybe get picked up and spotted and progress through. That's what's happened to players in the past. You've seen Dan Bibby progress through, Sam Edgley, and uh, probably the uh, Tom Mitchell being, being the, the crucial one who was playing for the Marauders and uh, Whalers 18, 24 months ago. Great. Thanks for speaking to us today, Mike, and best of luck with Samurai for the tournament. Thanks. Head to head, we are in Caldy, and I have the coaches of Apache and Je and Justice with me. On my right, I have Adam and the Apache team. Yay! And on my left is Julian with his Jesters. Yay! Right, guys, the rules of the game: when you want to answer a question, just slap your hands on your knees, okay? okay? And we've got seven questions. So here goes. First question: Which of the Northern Hemisphere 15s teams beat a Southern Hemisphere team on its recent tour this year? Ireland. No, that's incorrect. I'm afraid. Adam. Scotland. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Well done. Yes. 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 Next question. Yes. Which Welsh winger recently retired from international rugby? Julian. Uh, Shane Williams. Correct. Yeah. Well done, guys. Yeah. Equal at the moment. Third question. Which team won this year's Six Nations? Julian. Wales. Good work. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Next question. Which team has won this year's Super 7 Series? Adam. New Zealand. No, this year's Super 7 series. <laughs> Templars. Templars oh, is correct. Oh, hey. It's all decided. It's a trick question. <laughs> 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 OK, guys, you really need to ask the next two questions to win this, OK? So the next question, where will Rugby Sevens be first played as an Olympic sport? Julian. Rio. That is yeah. correct. And with the score currently at four to one, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, Apache, that that means that you, Jesters, are the winners. Well done! <laughs> The final of the last leg of the series saw underdog local side Coldy make it all the way to face off with Seven's giant Samurai in what was going to be a really gripping final. Coldy had battled hard all day and really surprised everyone by taking a hard route to the final and getting there in style. Samurai had been impressive all day and although the series title had been ripped from them earlier on when the Templars beat Whalers in the quarter final, they were looking strong and determined. The final got off to a scraggy start with both teams looking slightly exhausted, but again, surprisingly, it was Coldy who drew first blood and with a lovely bit of individual work, a step and hard running saw them over the line. But Samurai kept a cool head and came straight back into them and danced down the wing to score another nice solo effort to bring them even. With the conversion knocked over, it was 7-5 to the Samurai. So Coldy's turn now, and a great show and go and some very nice offloading led to Coldy's second score. This time, converted and taking Coldy into the lead. Coldy were now looking like a match that Samurai hadn't seen all day. But Samurai also had the attacking skills to match, and they straight away came back with some strong hard running through the Coldy defence to touch down under the post and take another score. The try was converted as well, and it was beginning to look like a tennis style game of sevens, with the scoreline going back and forth.
Samurai wanted to stake their claim, however, and managed a quick turnover from the kickoff and some good lines to go over again in the corner. However, this time missing the conversion. So Coldy wanted to get themselves back in the game, and they did so convincingly with the team captain taking it upon himself to break the line and go in underneath the sticks. Coldy converted the try, leading the team straight into half time. So, half time, and the scores were level at 19 apiece. The crowd were hardly expecting to see this result, but with a large home crowd support, they were certainly making themselves known and spurring on the home team to work harder than ever. I can only imagine the team talk for Samurai at half time would be somewhat stern and making sure they up their tackle count in the second half. So the second half started quite slowly with neither team wanting to let up or break ranks. However it was Samurai who showed that they were there to play hard and ran in a really nice skillful try which came from good patience on the ball. They didn't convert however and Coldy now wanted a shot and digging deep they made another stormy try down the wing and with great support work they went over the line and also claimed the conversion, taking them into the lead by two points. But again, Samurai are a team you can't give an inch to, and they took it right away when given the chance with some well-timed passing and hard lines to once again go underneath the post and take the try and the conversion. But still, Coldy came back for more with what was for me the try of the day, with the scrum half leaving the rushing defence stranded with a fake pass and went through to score himself underneath the post for a well-deserved point. The term ballsy comes to mind. The conversion was good and Coldy led once again, the crowd getting louder by the second. So with Coldy up by two points, Samurai were determined to spoil the home team's chances of a win and worked hard in the middle of the pitch with some fantastic running and a great support line to see them claim another one. The conversion was also good and this saw Samurai now lead by five points, but Coldy had possession in the last play. However, it was just too much and although they battled hard for some phases, through a knock-on, the time was up and Samurai had won the final. A fantastic game to end the series. The spectators couldn't have asked for a better finale and although Coldy didn't win, they certainly proved they were a side to reckon with. So at the end of the Super Series, we see for the first time in three years a new team on top, with Templars winning the Super Series 2012. Samurai takes second place for the first time and only narrowly lost out after a bad result at Worthing. Apache show they are one of the better sides around with a solid third place and GB students finish well after a slow start to see them take fourth place. So the series is over and pre-season has begun. It's been a long hard series with some great sevens on show despite the weather. Make sure you're there next year for an even bigger and improved series which will see the elite titans on the UK seven circuit do battle once more. See you soon guys. I'm here with John, the captain of uh, Ben Smith Memorial Sevens from Caldy, and JJ, who was voted the player of the tournament. They are the only invitational team ever to get to a final in the Super Sevens series, so they must be pretty ecstatic right now. How are you guys feeling? Tired, <laughs> uh, exhausted. It's been a long day. We actually played uh, the Barracudas in the first game, and they put us to the sword quite a bit, put a big heavy score on us. It was a bit of a, a, a wake-up because it's the first time we've ever played in one of the Super 7 series. Uh, but after that, we regrouped and we came together, beat the next two teams, qualified second in the group, and then just kicked on, really. A um, couple of injuries, nine players left in the final, and to just miss out is disappointing, but very satisfying that we all stuck together and put a really good effort in. So what are you guys all about? I mean, obviously you played sevens before after, after the incredible performances you put in. Um, how did you come about? Are you from Colty Rugby Club? or? Okay. Ken Smith is a uh, top man at the club, he's been involved with the club for many years and uh, sadly his son died quite a few years ago in a motor accident and so ever since then we've entered a team, well he's, his friends started it, they entered a team every year it's called the Ben Smith Memorial Team and Ken's kept it going so that's how we've come about. Okay guys, well it's a shame that you didn't uh, win the final, missing out just, um, but you put in some awesome performances today so 
well done for that and hope to see you in the future on the Super 7 series. Right. Thanks. Thank you. I'm here with Mike, Mark and Tim of Samurai Barracudas. Guys, you've just won the final of the Coldy Leg of the Super 7 series. You must be feeling pretty chuffed with yourself right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long day and uh, we just managed to squeak that win, which was a bit of a bonus for us. Uh, not winning the series is a bit of a downer, but we'll take the win here. And uh, just like to congratulate Cordy as well and the Templars. Um, I thought Cordy were outstanding during the whole day, and Templars for their victory on this in the whole series. I mean, obviously that Cordy game, the final game, was a really tight one. Uh, how do you feel the game went overall? Um, well, yeah, tackling was optional for both sides, I think. But um, to be fair, as, as, as Brighty's just said, Cordy were outstanding. You know, they, they attacked us and they had some wheels in their team and they, and they used it. Um, and fortunately for us, we had some experience. And when we play with a bit of shape and attack, you know, we caused, uh, we caused them real problems. Uh, the difference or the, the, the reality is too many missed tackles by both sides. So that will probably be the disappointing thing. But a win's a win, winners are grinners. That's the way that the Barracudas roll. So, yeah, good, uh, good win. So you uh, came second in the series overall this year, um, obviously first Templars. Uh, how do you feel the series went overall? Um, I think it was a fantastic series. It, it was really well run um, from a Barracuda point of view. Yeah, obviously we are disappointed. Um, we got off to a flyer at, at, at Bury and then let ourselves down Worthing and then and finished strong today. So, you know, it's a good way to finish, but a little bit um, disappointed, obviously. And uh, I don't know, on, on, next year, let's uh, try and uh, take it out again. So what are the plans going ahead? What, what do you feel about what you need to do next year maybe to top the table? Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I want to have a rest, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, um, I don't know. Just, we just got to turn up and probably be more consistent during that over the whole four legs or however many legs there is. And uh, you can't slacken off. We've seen we slacken off in Worthing and it's cost us. OK, great. Well, uh, well done for winning this leg of the, the Super 7 Series and see you next year. Cheers, Cheers guys. So here we are to present the trophy to the winning team of the Super 7 Series, the Templars. Well done boys. So, Rob, what does it feel like to win the whole series? Oh, it's, it's amazing. Firstly, um, congratulations to Samurai uh, today. You know, they, they uh, played outstanding, pushed all the way in the final by Cordy, which was great to see one of the, the, uh, the non-core teams do so well. You know, they played a really good final. Um, we weren't up to it in the semi-final today. But you know, winners are grinners, and we took the series. So uh, well done, guys! Yeah, and uh, thanks so much for everyone that's played and been part of the last four tournaments. So I guess the last thing to do is to take the trophy off you, smile, and have a big cheer. Yeah. All right, brothers on three, guys. One, two, three. Okay, guys, you may recognise this fella. Um, that's because he has been managing the team that have actually won the Super 7 series, the Templars. He's been in the last two episodes. Yes, it's Rob K, AKA Beast. Hey Rob, how's it going? Very well, Charlie, yourself? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. It's nice and snug. Now, uh, your boys have obviously won the whole series. Yeah. How does it feel? Oh, you just, honestly, you can't put, you can't match words for it. It's, um, it's huge. Obviously, we're a new team this year, um, you know, <laughs> with a very, very, small sort of spectrum of players and uh, behind the scenes people we come up against these big teams and to win the series is fantastic you know words can't describe it uh, I think after today it was uh, a massive sense of relief because obviously we were leading going into the last series um, you know and and once we uh, destroyed the quarter finalist which are in the first half I could relax then because I knew it was always going to be difficult for them to come back and the semi-final even though uh, we got beaten, we won the series. So very, very happy. Thank you very much, Rob. No, thank you. You guys have been brilliant as well on the, on the TV and everything. So uh, cheers, guys. <laughs>